Hey, it's Katrina Sawa here with jumpstartyourbiznow.com. I want to talk to you today about a very sensitive topic for entrepreneurs, especially solopreneurs. When we work by ourselves, it's refunds, refunds, chargebacks, and cancellations. OMG. Nobody wants those, right? Nobody thinks they're going to get some because they do such great work, especially if you're a heart-centered, super caring person. Why would anybody ever want to refund or specifically do a charge back? That's like taking the money back behind your back almost um, and or canceling. And I can tell you that probably 95% of the time someone is asking for that, it's about them and not you. Okay. There's a like four things to look at here. First of all, we have to be nice to ourselves when something like this happens. It usually takes us off guard, right? It usually like throws us for a loop. They tell us on a call, all of a sudden, one minute they're happy, one minute they're not, right? Or they tell us even worse by email. Oh, you know what? I think I'm canceling. I want a refund, right? And you're like, oh God. And then your heart pounds because you're like, crap, that was thousands of dollars. How am I going to pay that back? right? That's the first thing you think of, number one. And then you're thinking, why would they want that? They said such great things, right? So there's the mindset of like, is it me? Like, did I do something wrong? And again, 99% of the time, you probably didn't, right? Unless you're um, some greedy person who doesn't care and takes people's money and just doesn't do what you say you're going to do. I'm sure none of you watching are that. So we, we have to really be careful with our mindset going wonky because it will ruin the rest of the trajectory of that day or week or month, perhaps, right? With the energy that we take on. It's okay. I get it. And I've had this happen to me too. It's like, oh my God, it's a me too situation here. Seriously. I mean, you can't be in business for 20 years and have as much exposure as I have without having a few refunds, cancellations, and even chargebacks, let's face it. But it's really only happened probably a dozen times, maybe 14 in 20 years, and thousands of clients, I think that's a pretty good thing, right? But when it happens to you, it feels like, I mean, it's devastating. I know, I've cried over these situations before, even gotten emotional, where I couldn't work for the rest of the day, and I cried to my husband at night, drank wine to try to, you know, uh, uh, drown my sorrows, and it's the what I can tell you <laughs> is that it's not usually I'm, I'm talking to those of you who really care about your clients, but it's not your fault. OK, lots of the times it's something that's going on in their world, that client's world, their life, their their relationship with their kid, their spouse, a friend or family or maybe a financial setback that just happened. I had somebody I want to say that. Um, signed up for coaching with me. And as soon as she signed on the dotted line and paid her first payment, boom, like their air conditioner unit went out or something. And it was like a thousands of dollars and she had to cancel because she didn't have that extra money. So it's not usually you, but so my advice is to figure out, like, think ahead, like let's plan ahead a little bit, right? Because Sometimes, let's face it, if someone pays us a big chunk of change, maybe they're on a payment plan, which is great for consistent cash flow. But if someone pays you in full for 2000 or 20000 uh, you might say, you be, and then go, boom, put it somewhere, right? Or invest in something. Like last January, we went and bought a travel trailer and we paid in cash because I had a couple of painful clients. I'm like, boom, $40,000. There you go. Um, but I can't do that every day, right? And thankfully, I don't have any refunds or chargebacks that month, right? Um, but it's in all joking aside, there are things you can do to prevent or to minimize your the effect that it's going to have on you if and when this does happen, right? So I'm just kind of hoping to prepare you in one way. So number one is please uh, think about the... I know you have to remind yourself that it's not you, it's them. And there's probably some kind of situation going on for them. And first of all, try to get them on a phone call. Try to get them on a phone call and talk it through. 
and, and find out because I've had phone calls with clients to where they're like, oh, can you not charge me this month? And um, come to find out they have plenty of money. They just have a fear of too much debt. And so it's a previous issue that they had. And, um, you know, and it's, it's, it's just life. And they have this fear of debt and it's not me. And it's not that they don't want to pay me. It's just that they have, they're scared, okay, of something. And so it could be that, but it also could be their husband is going into for surgery and they don't have the medical thing and they have tens of thousands of dollars going out in surgery. Who knows? You don't know until you ask, right? And really, you know, get to know a little bit deeper what's really going on there. Maybe you can postpone something. Sometimes uh, with people that are in a three-year agreement with me in my mastermind, um, we just need to take a two or three month pause, for example, right? And so I tack on payments at the end instead of, and I pause for them because they have something going on, right? I've done that with people that have go through cancer. I, you know, and so like, I'm, I'm a reasonable person and I think you're probably a reasonable person, I'm guessing. And, you know, you can make it work. So it's still a win-win for everybody involved. So number one, you got to, like get into a conversation if you're able with the person who's questioning or or wants to cancel and see if you can save it or save the relationship or continue doing something okay the second thing is to manage your own emotions so we got to manage our own emotions and try to i mean as best as you can like snap out of it as soon as possible yes we have to feel the emotion i don't want you to just you know tuck it down but we we feel the emotion and then sometimes you know once we talk it through to somebody maybe you have a mentor that you can talk it through maybe you have a, another business owner friend that you can uh, talk it through maybe somebody else in your family that's willing to listen and talk through that anybody that's gone through that before um and they can help talk you down a little bit, get you calmer and realize it's really not you, right? Because I've gotten very emotional. Oh my God, they don't like me, right? I mean, that's my whole thing is, the, oh, they don't like me. No, it's not that they don't like me. It's just maybe it wasn't a good fit or maybe continuing on wasn't the right fit, whatever, right? So managing your own emotions is really important. And then the cash flow part of it all, right? That's the part that freaks out a lot of newer entrepreneurs is they don't always have money in the bank to be able to do refunds because the money that they do get funds their business, right? Pays for their coaches or goes to the bills or whatever. And so if somebody's paying, then a refund is very devastating. It can be, especially if it's thousands of dollars. So it's not an easy thing, but as the business owner, you you get to call the shots so please don't let a client railroad you into doing anything immediately okay so you can always say and this is what i was just telling the client earlier you can always say i hear what you're saying and i'm going to take it in and i you know i say stuff like um I don't want to work with anybody who isn't totally happy and wanting to work with me. So we can figure out a way to make it happen. Let me go look at your account and what we've done and what we haven't done. And I can get back to you. So you don't have to make a decision in the moment is my point. Please don't make a decision in the moment without going and researching what they've done and what they haven't done. Because most of us sell packages, right? So if you sell a six month package for X dollars and this much per month, perhaps, but you throw in all this extra stuff because they agreed to the six months that you wouldn't normally do if they just did a month a month. Then what you do is like, look, when you are making that agreement, this is some, you might have to change the initial languaging that you're using with clients. You might have to say stuff like, because we're doing the six month, I'm throwing this in for free, a $2,400 value. And I'm throwing this in for free as a $1,500 value um, because you're doing the six months with me, just an FYI. If you weren't, if you were doing month to month, you would not get those for free, just so you know. Right. And so if for some reason that particular person wants to cancel and you've laid out that in the beginning, then guess what? You already got this delivered. You already got that delivered. That's an extra four thousand dollars that you need to pay for because it's already been delivered or it's already 
in the works or whatever it is, if that's the case, right? So please make sure if someone does do that and you have some kind of a package that you break everything down into a retail rate. If they were to buy this one thing and that one thing, how much would it be then? Because when they see those dollars like that, sometimes they continue, they don't do the refund because they don't realize that they did that a month and a half ago, right? Um, the other thing to protect yourself a little bit is to have a paper trail and a recording of what you agreed to. So if you're on a call with someone and they agree to work with you, say, hey, let me just record this real quick. If you didn't already record the whole conversation and then you record, OK, we're agreeing to this. I'm going to give you this and this is what you're going to get. And this is where we're going to take you. And I'm throwing this in as a bonus, which is a twenty four hundred dollar round. I'm throwing this as a bonus, which is that. that. And you're agreeing to the six months, yes. And we're gonna do a payment plan, yes. Okay, great. And then you have that on recording. They get the copy of the recording. You get a copy of the recording. And if for any reason there is any dispute or problem, um, then we agree that you will pay for whatever has been delivered or consumed. And um, it's possible that I will give a refund, but or you can say, no, there's no refunds here. And this is the transformation and you need to do the work. Right. So you have to say and outline whatever it is you want. The other thing is to put those that those words either into an agreement and contract that they're going to sign. Right. If you want to, I don't make all my clients sign a contract. Only the ones usually that work with me for a year or longer sign an actual physical contract. Um, but the six month or the three month coaching or a few calls here and there don't um, web design services. Yes, I have somebody sign a contract for that. Um, but that's, that's it. And that's, you could choose to have everybody sign a contract, but I frankly like to make it easy to buy, right. And not have to worry about all those things, but I do also record all my conversations. So I have recordings. And then a lot of times after we're done, once they've agreed to do something, I will send an email and say, this is what we've agreed to. You're doing this. I'm getting this. You're going to pay for this. And this is the payment plan, blah, blah, blah. Just email me back that you're, that that's what we agreed to. You didn't say yes. And then we're good. And if that happens, usually if anything happens like a chargeback or, you know, lo and behold, they take you to court or whatever, um, you will win if you have everything documented and you've saved it all. I save all that stuff for clients and I've won every single chargeback that's ever come, which again, it might have been three or four chargebacks ever in 20 years, which is not a lot. But that's when someone goes behind your back and just tells their credit card company that they want their money back. And the credit card book company just pulls it out of your account. And then you're like, oh crap, how come all this money's gone? And that's when they send you a notice and you send them all the documentation of why they shouldn't be getting a charge back. And that's, I've won every single one and always got the money back because there's always proof. And usually what's happening with the client at that point is there, there's something else going on in their world that's really screwed their, them up mindset or, or mindset wise or financial wise. And it's not me. And they're just trying to capture any bits of money that they can, which is a desperate situation, right? And you just don't want to be in that same desperate situation as them. So those are some tips for you. Now, the one other thing is to put this wording, like I said, on your website. So if you are selling anything versus via Zoom or on your website, click and buy type stuff, you really do. It's against the law not to have a policies and procedures and terms and conditions stuff on your website. In fact, if you have a merchant account services company, then they won't even give you the merchant account um, account until you have that written stuff on your website on how you collect data, um, all your refund policies, all that kind of stuff. And, um, and we can help you write that. I have some clients that do it too. So, but you wanna protect yourself, but also um, protect your clients and, and tell them, and if it's on your website and you also put it perhaps in your agreement, then you're at least covered because it's there, okay? And if someone, if someone wants a refund, I've asked for refunds back before from people. And the first thing I do is I look at my agreement that I signed, because I want to see what the small print says again, right? And what I'm entitled to there. And I look at their website policies page to see what the process is. And I can make a case or not make a case. And uh, I haven't always won what I wanted to get, 
but um, you know, I've, I've been in the situation where money is crucial right now and I had to pull out of something because I couldn't pay for it. I've been there and I get it. And so I, I can totally relate to people who are in that situation as well. And because I work with a, quite a bit of startup client, clientele, um, it happens, right? Because honestly, there's a three-year entrepreneurship uh, entrepreneur evolution that goes on when you're a startup. I have a whole roadmap. And here, <laughs> here's the roadmap, right? Three-year evolution plan, year one, year two, and year three in order to get to a smooth running money-making business machine. And too many people think they're gonna get to hundred grand or get rich in a, a, a year or less. And it's not always a realistic expectation, especially if you have um, some money mindset stuff that we gotta work through in order to get you there. So consistent cash flow, a lot of consistent cash flow is the goal, but sometimes these things happen. And that's why I did this um, video today. And I'm not sure, how public I'm going to make this. We'll see uh, where I decide to put this because it's sensitive information, but I think it's information that most entrepreneurs are not paying attention to and not prepared for. So I'm trying to help you from getting things like this happen to you. Um, so as much as you can prepare with the client or prospect ahead of time, you wanna do that. You wanna protect yourself ahead of time by recording and documenting. And you want to also take charge and set boundaries when somebody approaches you on this subject <coughs> because it is your company, it's not theirs. And you have the right to decide what you're doing. Whether you agree with what they're saying or not, I usually, you can negotiate. You can negotiate where the final you know, fee might lie or what might be due or not due. So you can negotiate, it's not black and white and you need to stand up for yourself in this regard, okay? So this is Katrina Sawa. This is just one of the 462 things that we need to know as an entrepreneur. And uh, <clears throat> if you want more on this or you wanna to talk to me about growing your business the right way from the start and really make a consistent generating revenue business for yourself, doing what you love, then I would love to speak with you. I've been doing business for 20 years. I love working with entrepreneurs who have a huge gift to give, want to make a bigger impact and need to make a lot of money or want to make a lot of money in the process. So come see me at jumpstartyourbiznow.com. Go to the free trainings page or the resources page and set up a call or download something and good luck on your journey.